Okay, people, it's time for another Foosh Play Day. It's the most wonderful time of the year. I wanted to say month, but that doesn't really work. On top of, I don't get these out monthly. What happens is I'm cruising around online. I see some custom work for sale. I, I gotta give it a shot. Or I go to the P.O. box and some kind-hearted person has sent me something to play with, to mess with, to look at. It's, it's awesome. And all of that gets my creativity going, what little I do have. And I think, oh man, this will go on a play day. This, I need to do some customs. And that gets me motivated. That gets me off my lazy ass to do some painting or some cutting. Not so much sculpting anymore, but I like doing the cutting and I like doing the painting. And that's what play day is all about. Showing off some fantastic work from amazing artists, helping people get some exposure if they're wanting to sell their wares, their goods, their add-ons for your 112 scale figures, or inspire people to make their own customs. Because if I can do it, anybody can do it. Because I am just, I wonder if this color will work. Try it, no, that doesn't work. If my artistic ability was a pencil, it would have a little bitty tip and a big old eraser on it. But that's the fun of it, giving it a shot, giving it a try, having something unique on your shelf. It, it's just fun. We're just playing. That's all that matters. And yes, we're gonna start with this big bastard again. Yeah, 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 Robo. We've seen your black chrysanthemum several times. But I was tooling around John Walker Customs again one day, and I noticed that he had an updated head sculpt. It's essentially the same as the first one, but the eyes are more defined and the mouth is closed. In fact, it looks like he's giving a slight grin. And yeah, I still can't paint eyes. I was gonna use the water slides that I've been using, but they're too small for this size. Black chrysanthemum is just a big boy. So this head will go back to my first body that I'm still working on. Got to paint up the armor for that. Oh, and make new hands because I stole them for this one. I've done way more explaining on this on past play days, but I also got the armor from John Walker, the belt, the knuckle dusters, and then I went to town cutting up the torso of a diamond select Chewbacca. I think I am finally happy with this. We'll see. This little mod is in my, I'm not quite sure it works yet, file. Now, as we all know, the Marvel Legends Siren came with this hair and it's got action to it. It's got some curls, but standing in a neutral position on the shelf, like I usually display, I needed something a bit more laid back. So I hacked off the hair of Mary Jane that came in the two pack with Spider-Man and mm, it, I don't know if I put it on right. I think this needs to be down a bit. I didn't get it angled down. You can really see it over here. It kind of sweeps back. A little bit of action, but at the same time, I want it down. Plus that'll help hold down the cape. So I may be peeling this back off, doing some dremeling, doing some regluing, see what happens. I'll probably paint it a little more orangey. Not this orange, but more orange than this red. Same time, I don't know, I kind of like that color against the yellows and the greens. I know I shot a video showing this, but I'm finished with it now. This is some Power Ranger head on the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series New Republic security droid, I think it's called. It had a rebel symbol, or well, I guess New Republic here and here, so I sanded it off, but it marred up the plastic, and I thought, you know what? If I took that sandpaper to the rest of the body, it would give it an aged look. At least that's what I'm hoping this comes off as, because it dirties it up a bit. It highlights edges in places. This is another one where I don't know if I'm quite happy yet, but at the moment, he fills out a space in the display. My reavers are complete, at least mostly complete. I may still tweak this. I need to paint up Lady Deathstrike to fit the grunginess of the rest of the crew. Then I got extra bone breaker build a figure pieces to spruce up my custom. But at the moment, it's pretty, oh, I need Pierce too, dang it. Because the Hellfire Club version isn't cutting it. I need his Outback look, never ends. <laughs> That's the way it is with customs, you're never happy and it never ends. Here's a quickie that I knocked out in less than an hour. It's the Clone Wars Aura Sing. I'm not to that point in Clone Wars yet, but what do you do with an extra Aura Sing? You Google, and then you go, oh, the black jumpsuit and extra makeup looks spiffy. And I had an extra Aura Sing. Wow, <laughs> might as well, right? My biggest hurdle was removing the gun rig in order to paint under there, because I didn't want to cut these. These are small. What I ended up doing is just slicing right here and pulling it down, painted, sealed it, brought it back up, glued it back together, and then painted down here. And it's essentially the same for the vest. I pulled it down to the wrists, painted, pulled it back up, painted down at the end of the limb. And I was being careful painting the seam of the shirt around the back, and then I realized 
it's going to be covered up to hell with that. And then she has some extra eye makeup. This isn't as clean as what we saw in the show, but I wanted to stick with that Black Series aesthetic of making animated looks more realistic. So I just kind of slapped it on, matched it with the rest, and uh... I think that came out okay. Oh, and this is painted black too. So overall, just a different aura sing for the shelf. I figure as soon as this makes itself at home in my display, Hasbro will announce this version because it's, <laughs> like I've shown, it's a pretty easy repaint. If you watched my Mayfex IG-11 review, I kind of pondered the possibility of changing it into an IG-88. Because at the moment, the only IG-88 we have is the Hasbro Black series. And look at the size difference here. You can already see what I did for this conversion. First, I stole the bandolier, which the band itself does seem slightly small, but it seems to hang in the same spot. It doesn't seem out of scale. Now, IG-88 has some different kibble here at the mid-torso, but I'm not being that much of a stickler for it. I'm just going for the IG-88 feel. Plus I wanted to keep it to where if I wanted to or needed to go back to IG-11, I could just pop these parts off, throw the IG-11 stuff back on, wow, wow, done, back at it. So when it came to the hands, all I did was slice them off the Black Series figure, drill new holes, and then fit them on the pegs. And that just involved measuring the pegs with my new handy dandy calipers, and then taking a pin drill, making a hole in it. You can see I got this hand slightly crooked. It was my first try and I've never used a pin drill before. In fact, I ordered this specifically to do this custom, but I nailed the other hand. Now, if you watched the Mayfex review, you also saw that the guns didn't fit in the grip hands worth a damn. In fact, it was floppy, they'd turn it, well, you know, turn it upside down, they fall right out. That's just waiting for a carpet monster to do 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 do. I don't have that problem with the IG88 because I can turn this around and the Black Series figure has peg holes right there. Problem was I couldn't find the rifle that came with IG88, so I had to take a similar looking gun and then drill holes. This came in handy. I, it paid for itself right off the bat. So you just pin it in you're good to go. It also came with this blaster back here and it did have the hole in it because <laughs> that blaster's been in that holster since I got the figure. But I like the look of that sticking over the shoulder so my IG-88 is just gonna be holding the rifle. And because of the Moffex articulation, that is not a problem whatsoever. In fact, he can almost shoulder it. That is awesome. I half thought about painting it because IG-88 didn't have this goldish tint to it, but then I realized, oh, Hasbro did the same thing for their archive edition, so... And again, if I need to convert this back to 11, it's there. I don't have to do anything but swap some parts. And then to finish off my own customs, here is Snow Meow from Thundercats. I didn't know this was a thing until Veebs handed me a battle cat and asked me, can you repaint this white? And I said, sure, that's pretty easy. I'll just spray paint some primer and then go from there. But the more I looked at reference pictures, there was a grayness to it. So I came through and did some dry brushing, which probably isn't really visible on here because white plastic, bright lights, but it does tone down that brightness a little bit. And I wanted to differentiate the fur here. Coming down, there's a little gray, and then it's white here and here. I just masked off the eyes and left the Battle Cat ones because while they look cartoony, uh, it's based on a cartoon. But I left the inside, they're okay, there's a little bit of green, but don't judge me. But I'm not finished. I'm going to come in, paint the claws, and maybe the teeth, just to have them stand out a bit. I'm filming it now because I'm heading to Veeb's house this weekend, and I don't have time to finish that before filming, but I won't have it for the next play day. So there you go. There's a white battle cat. Okay, here's some crazy boxes from Anthanatos Arsenal. I had a chance to look in the boxes. That's why I said they were crazy but there's no way I can go through all these in the span of this play day. Plus look at this, Robo don't know. Look at this. There's a letter and it essentially says, here is a lot of weapons. There's a sonic cannon from Dark Knight Returns. Here's some special weapon attachments for the bat from G.I. Joe. Moon Knight accessories set. There's Konshu, there's a moon ring, there's a staff. Walter PPK with silencer, James Bond style. Look at the triggers. There's Tennessee whiskey, vampire hunting items. There's a crossbow, there's a cross with a blade on bottom. Axes, there's sickles, there's cell phone? Yeah, smartphone. Here's a shield for armored Spider-Man. Wicked Outcast Gaffy Stick. And it's thin, but it has some flex to 
to it. They're not going to break unless you just straight up, you know, how it goes. You know how to break stuff and how not to break stuff. Here's a loose gun. Dang it. Oh, wait, that's recognizable. I know that from somewhere. That's not all. Look, there's a layer and there's a layer and there's a layer. Good gravy. What is this? This is a cable BFG fusion cannon with X logo. Oh yeah, and there's an X logo right there on the side. Shotgun, tactical helmets, med kit. Good God. There's also some bread and some butter for some Star Wars. Some of them come out, but there's a blaster. And uh, oh, I know what those are. Some Mandalorian style blaster. Here's some big blasters for Star Wars. Yeah, okay. Also in the letter it said if it's bent, just heat it up, bend it to position, put it under cold water. It doesn't end. There is just all kinds of weapons in here. There is a clone rifle, a heavy rifle. Oh, and there's another box. Batarangs, various batarangs and bat type things. Goblin blade, commando katana and sheath. Very nicely done. Baseball bats and there's another big ass gun and oh, what is this? It's the Necronomicon. All kinds of throwing stars. Commando trench knife. Holy shit, that's a big blade. Dylan says there are 800, almost 800 items of all varieties. So if you're interested in some kind of weapons, yeah, links in the description. Oh, wait. There were also these weapons outside the box. The runic battle hammer and giant war hammer. Which caught me off guard because they're painted and he included this mythic legions figure. Sir Owain, I think, or something? Look how nicely this matches up with the armor. And I like how this one's gold to kind of stand out a bit because it's the smaller hammer. Yeah, you're gonna see this big bastard, but then, oh, look over there, that's cool. Hmm. No, no, I can't be buying new toy lines. You guys gotta stop. Here is a custom painted Shadow Trooper from Spark Spartan Customs. We met at Star Wars Celebration and then after I got home, well, a little bit after I got home, I went to the P.O. Box and there was this. It is the new school Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Stormtrooper painted black. And I love the look of a good Shadow Trooper. Look at the silver in the eyes. Seems like we would have this variation by now, but seen it but i'm also okay with having different variations they did a shadow trooper with the old figure i think now that i have this i don't have a dire need for new ones but i would army build some depending on the price hmm. then there's also this speaking of that first version of the stormtrooper i'm gonna be honest i had this standing on the desk with the shadow trooper but i had the card for it Somehow I lost the note or envelope this came in. So I'm not sure who sent this. If you did send it, please comment or hit me up something. I want to give full credit for this because look, even in the helmet, Ugh. got some blast marks, the dirtiness of the armor. Oh, it just all works. Since this was the first version, it's got an awkwardness to it, but it works for this. You can see this just kind of trudging along the abandoned Imperial outpost. I apologize for not knowing who sent this. Again, I will give full credit. I'll even put it in the next play day if you hit me up. You just let me know. Here is a Luke cloak from Soft Good Studio on Etsy. And with the amount of Jedi Lukes that I have, I'm always happy to get another cloak. The thing about this one, the wire is very heavy. And me saying it like that, it sounds like a bad thing, but this will hold its position no matter what you do. It is sturdy as hell, which I like. I can put it like this and to change positions, I gotta push really, really hard. But then there's wire running down to here where I can put this anywhere. You want some dynamic action to it? Can do that. It's a very nice material. Not only that, there's also this Mythos Boba Fett set. I actually didn't know much about Mythos Boba Fett. I Googled it, Sideshow did a figure. I've seen several, uh, like a statue or two. Yeah, the robes coming off of them. Mm, I, I got a new Boba Fett for the shelf. I like how the ends are singed. It's got some pockets to it. The kind of dirtiness, that desert look to the cloth. The lower piece has some elastic in it to pull up over the legs but they're split, it goes under the pockets, it goes right up to the belt. And then for the top, it's wired on both sides and also has the burns on the ends and comes across. This makes me wanna give a very sandy look, dirty the hell out of this Boba Fett, have it under these robes. And like I said, it's another Boba Fett for the display. It's cool to get something that I didn't really have a lot of background with, I barely knew existed, but now it exists. I have it on the shelf. 
and more custom work and <laughs> I love it. Okay, if you remember back to the first lunchbox I got from Slacker Hacker, you realize that there's going to be some insanity in here. Here's the unparalleled PowerCon exclusive and it says that because he showed up at PowerCon, handed me this and we went through this for like an hour. So I know what's in here, but I, I'm still wary to unleash this beast, the villainous Darth Odious. So you open this and you are automatically met with Wade's face, with dinosaur hands and his bunnies. This, which I just kept because I like Kenner boxes <laughs> and I don't have a lot of them. And again, you recognize that from the Kenner box I just pulled out, but then there's all this. And what it's meant for is the unparalleled universe Rubio head. Look at that. It's a smaller body. It has a robot arm, robot arm, but the tank part also has robot arms. There's his spoon, there's wires. I mean, even if you look up inside of it, there's circuit board and stuff just for extra detail. He's got a flamethrower arm. There's wires running through here. The paint job in foosh blue, but all this silver wear marks and stuff, the lighter blue right here. There's also a skeleton or a bone parts that I can add to other things. Dinosaur hands, again, remember. Uh, got his man bag. Punk Ewok head that I can use over here if I don't want to use it for Rubio. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, I'll get to that in a minute because there's this crazy thing. It's just a Wookiee kind of day. It's a Wookiee tank-legged person kind of day. This is a Chewbacca with Stormtrooper armor, hollowed out, and, well, it's on the figure, but it's made to look like he just strapped them on. The legs, the purple toes. Again, with the different ties and the nylon. Oh, that's actual thread. And there's rope. And this is meant for Wade's odious head. Armor him up and represent Tuesday crew. But if I want this on the Star Wars shelf, which... <laughs> I didn't have a place for this anyway, so that's probably going to stay on. But if I didn't like that option, there's also this Wookiee head with blue Stormtrooper armor. <laughs> it's amazing. He can hold the unparalleled Captain America. There's Wade's rabbits. I love that Rubio is this much smaller, that, <laughs> but he's packed with firepower. It's not like he's, you know, easy to beat. He's an actual threat. And then here's Odious just... Here's a couple of weapon sets from Mark II Design, who I've featured on Playdays before, but there's been some changes on his end. There's a note that says, formerly known as Mark II Design, I've moved on from 3D printing and have started my new company called Mark II Toys LLC. My first two sets are weapon set A and weapon set B. They are injection molded with ABS plastic. Both sets are available on mark2toys.com, link in the description for $13 a piece. Future sets will feature muzzle flashes, deco, and other play features. For $13, here's set A. You get this. And when he said deco on future weapons, I thought that these would be unpainted, but even still, oh, those are super nice. Primer these up, throw a paint job on them, or hell, just throw some silver, or some black. You got some nice ass weapons. And then for weapon set B, there's different weapons. Oh, there's a bayonet on the end of that one. And like I was talking about earlier, if you put enough force on that, of course it's gonna break. As most things do, you exert enough pressure, things are gonna snap. But like the note said, ABS plastic, it's it's got a rigidity to it. Can I use that with beachhead? More rifle and shotgun. Machine pistol, and I don't know what that is. We've already established that I do not know weapons. Oh, okay. As hard as that snapped out, it, that was a good test, right? Dropped on the floor, which is not soft. There you go. Didn't break. Even with these smaller mounts for the scope. That tab right there is on that scope, so all the pressure was right there. Beautiful weapons beautiful presentation just all kinds of weapon choices today like i said link is in the description it is always nice to get a care package from rebel 10 customs when it comes to soft goods she just nails it it's just fantastic work i needed a foo shirt and beanie for my flint right this is his heading out to town maybe he's in disguise maybe this is leisure wear even though he's still wearing his fatigues under it that doesn't matter it's still a good look. I had already bought shorts for my TB League seamless body, but he needed a shirt too, so this works out great. Or I could do this. Gimme. Give Gimme. Give How about this? 
my custom head from Fan Plastic 4. Yeah, that's about the right body proportions, right? I am that chest. Look at that. I look good. Or maybe one of your figures needs a sleeveless Mandalorian shirt. You have a problem with Book of Boba Fett, bub? There's a stretchiness to these, so I could put it over the flint or I could put it over the TB League, even though that skin, it is tough to get material down over it. And then fits on a Marvel Legends figure, even with the muscles. So if you're needing something soft goods, something custom maybe, or something, it just if you have an idea, Instagram, Rebel 10 Customs, she may be able to help you out. Speaking of Fan Plastic 4, and well, Rebel 10 Customs made this cape too, so <laughs> just a custom storm all around. Corey over at Casting Cave has been painting up some Fan Plastic 4 sculpts, and oh man, the Hasbro Marvel Legends, it, it doesn't look bad. It works. I love how the hair flows the gray wash to the hair, the sculpt, everything. There is just something about hand painting and this more stylized hair. It's not flowing as much as this one. It's more neutral, but it still has some dynamic to it. It still has some flow, some action, and this sets it off. And you know it's Jim Lee because it's black costume. Oh, do I wanna get into that? No, I don't because we can't ever decide on which one we like better. Is it white? No, that's the cartoon. In the comics, it was black. Then there's Morph, who has a nice, good guy Morph look to it. Now, I am not done with this custom. Well, this is mostly done. I'm going to have to get rid of these Cyclops straps. Need to have some yellow here. And when it comes to Hasbro, that's a problem because every version of Cyclops or Forge or Deadpool who has this same style costume, all the yellows are different. So I can't even mix and match. The closest is Forge Torso with single carded cyclops and even that the yellows don't match so i'm going to end up having to paint which means i got to paint here and here and here and here and here on top of covering dark blue so at that point i might as well just primer the whole thing and give it a paint job it'll be worth it to have this morph in the display when i saw this rogue head on Corey's site i wasn't in love right off the bat i've been pretty happy with the target version of rogue with the hair and the better well is it a different face sculpt it's just painted better and then it's definitely a different hair sculpt then i hit google and of course i'm gonna find some reference art especially the is it the uh role-playing game or some kind of visual guide and once i got it in hand on the figure looking at it okay yeah i do like it quicksilver though was in dire need of a new head there was just something about that family matters set version that it kind of looks like Magneto, but the hair wasn't what I think of when I think of Pietro. It was kind of big on this body. And plus, like I said, a custom paint job is just mm -mm -mm, fantastic. See how it has the hair? That always gave Quicksilver a sense of movement, even when he wasn't moving. But the white hair, the gray shading, the skin tone, just, oh man, this... This spruces this up to where it now goes on the main display. But one character we're always on the quest to improve, much like Darth Vader, much like some other main characters from all the properties, Magneto is the one I cannot stop messing with. Most of this was a Super Tom Customs upgrade kit. The collar piece, the Rebel Tin Cape, Can of Beam's effect piece, the new helmet. Now the cherry on top is the Casting Cave slash Fan Plastic 4 Magneto head. Unfortunately, I can't fit the helmet over that nice hair sculpt, so because of the power effect, I can just have it floating above his hand, and there's my display magneto. Plus, there's a family resemblance to Quicksilver. A bit thinner here, but same facial features. There's a regal feel to it. So at the end of the day, any day we get to play is a damn good day. Yeah, I know. I still haven't come up with anything better. Play, day, 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 play, day, play. Again, amazing work out there fantastic artists just so many talented people running around the internet if you're needing any custom heads or soft goods or weapons or some kind of work done check out the links in the description but even if you're not wanting to buy something just go check out their work because again like i said at the first inspiration i'll run across stuff and think oh man now i want to do that or now i need that mm. that's another thing about playing it's just you know a community supporting itself support others help each other out that's what it comes down to we're just trying to have fun that's it if you enjoyed this play day comment like subscribe much much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel patreon.com but wherever you may be watching this 
I'll always catch you on the foosh. I've already told Corey to open a tab for me for the Jim Lee X-Men heads, or really any X-Men heads, because I, I can't reiterate this enough. A lot of the time, the Hasbro heads look great. I get those figures and I think, oh, perfect. It goes on the shelf. But then Alex comes in and then Corey comes along and paints up his sculpts and there's TLC and there's extra detail and there's some emotion to it, even though they're mostly neutral faces. They, they evoke the comic art that I really, really like. It doesn't fix anything, it spruces up. How about that? And I like some spruced up action figures.